All right, Amelia, thank you for being on the show. Really appreciate having you here. I'm pumped to be here. I have been wanting to join you, so I stalked you a bit on <laughs> Twitter because I That's figured, cool. hey, I think this is where he lives the most because he did not respond to me on LinkedIn. So let's go find where he's at. And well, I got so called out at the beginning of this. <laughs> but you know what? Because that's part of what I do is mm -hmm. finding where the people are that I want to talk to or that I think that I can contribute in some way, shape, form mm -hmm. to what their their goals and issues are. And um, I was like, hey, I want to join this guy. He's making big moves. Thank so you. Appreciate here we that. are. It's an honor. Yeah, no, I, I, I've seen you everywhere. We were talking <laughs> offline about how we see each other everywhere on social media. So it's about time that we we connect here. Yeah, and I'm glad you did reach out. Uh, been talking with a lot of folks about a lot of different things. I think this discussion is going to be different from the rest because we're going to talk about something very specific and it's near and dear to your heart in, in terms of what you're up to today. But before we do that, I want to pick apart your background a little bit and understand your journey to where you are. So instead of asking you the typical, how'd you get to where you are? I'm just going to kind of poke around your background a little bit for a couple of minutes so we can get to know you. And then we'll jump into the rest of the interview. Is that okay? I love it. Let's do it. Cool. So what does it mean to be a strategic GTM advisor at Humanic AI or Rev Genius, where you're also a strategic advisor? What does that encompass? My hands are in the cookie jar in some way, shape, or form. So you'll see people who have advisor roles galore, right? And it's mm -hmm. like, whoa, whoa, what are you doing? You're in, you just mean? graduated college. What's going on? You're a GTM <laughs> advisor. Like, and you're calling them all out today. I love it. <laughs> yeah. A little, little bit on fire over here. Yeah. It's, you know, you see that and I think, okay, what are they really contributing to? And I think, Time is such a precious thing for all of us. I am, that's a big focus of mine right now is time management because I can be here, 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 here. That's not doing anybody any good or mm. myself, my kids. Spreading yourself a little thin, yeah. Totally. And you know, multitasking is never the answer. So a few things that I was doing um, previously with different advisor roles, things mm -hmm. like that, serving me in the sense of, I it was a give take it was not a give okay. give okay so for instance say rev genius so i have helped with rev league where it's coaching reps to learn how to prospect better um, and then you know through humantic there's the there's the equity play within that where i'm showing mm. up and, and contributing so i think that that's a big factor that people are realizing oh there's equity plays within these advisor roles if you've done right and done well um on our end over here at reggie it's where Oh, we've got very hand selected advisors. It's not come one, come all by mm. any means. It's, um, There's criteria <laughs> and so forth. Form, right. Mm. Like, come use the platform, come one, come all. But advisor roles, super specific based off of these people are kind of quote unquote top shelf, if you will. Okay. They're the people who have changed the game in some way, shape, form, whatever they've done. Their ICP aligns pretty well with ours. Okay. And there's relationships that have been formed that are these trusted, they're trusted advisors for us who are going to give us the right feedback. And so it's on the product development side of it, it sounds like, as well as like maybe bridging introductions to potential clients and partners as well through that partnership. Yes. So that is like what I have taken the bull by the horns with recently, as in like this morning too, has been mm -hmm. my big focus of figuring out exactly how to do that best and not just do it, but do it well and do it right because it hasn't been an issue at all over here to do that advisor marketing or influencer marketing or whatever that may look like. Um, but, or that referral program, you know, having that through the advisors who have the 100K plus followers and it's like, all right, let's. So there's an influencer, an authority component, right. it sounds like to this as well. It's not like, you know, someone who doesn't have a massive following is, is that's probably part of your criteria is there's influence behind it. Audience. There has to be, influence. There has to be trusted relationships because I think mm -hmm. relationships drive everything. They drive it all. People are buying. We know this, right? People are mm -hmm. buying people that they know and they like and they trust. Right. So if those relationships are already established, why would we not go leverage the advisors who have the equity within the company too? Totally. 
Get it's very similar to a consultant role and the fact that we usually have very trusted advisor relationships with our clients and we can walk new products and solutions into the business because of our you know influence and relationships as you say totally it's a walking talking bridge to the solution that's already mm -hmm. been you know you just, you know it's a sturdy bridge because of that you've already walked it once or twice before because you followed that person because you trust them you know that what they're saying is actually going to be legit and hey if you want to try out this product, try it out. If you've heard of it, great. Like not, they've had some awesome features that have come out. It's super casual. Make right. it casual. Just be human. And how crazy is it that you have to even say that these days? Yeah, well, that's, it's funny. I just, I just did an interview yesterday morning with a gentleman who specializes in uh, EQ development for executive leaders. So he helps executives improve their emotional intelligence so that they can lead better and be more, you know, sound in stressful situations and all of that. But he talks about keeping your walls up and walls down. People who have their walls up are guarded and, you know, they're not, they don't treat it like a human interaction or they're, they're hard to interact with. It's because their walls are up and these sorts of things. So when you say that, it just triggers that for me that, you know, being able to have good relationships whether it's as a strategic advisor and you're consulting on this company and its product, or if you're out in the market as a consultant and you're working with you know company after company, you know, it's all about the human relationship and being human at the end of the day. We're all people dealing with stuff. And people. so let's keep it's it real, as they say, right? Play. I mean, literally, you don't fall asleep with your title. You don't. So it's, you know, you've got to, I've yeah. never been really intimidated by, um challenging the status quo or right. others are feeling as though but you know what that's me that's not right. everyone so I could go preach that to anybody and everybody I want but at the end of the day there's the introverts the extroverts the people right. who have a higher IQ people who have the I like to call it street smarts just being from Atlanta the <laughs> EQ but then, uh, it's you know I've always thought if you mesh those together that EQ that IQ the IQ is yeah. going to come but when you put the people first People recognize that and they feel that even through the Zoom room, right? Like you can mm. sense somebody's like looking down, and they're doing stuff. I mean, I've called people out too. This oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. I've been running trainings and people are, yeah. you can tell they're not paying attention. It's like, hey, are you with me? Uh, yeah. turn, you're going to turn your camera on. Uh, these sorts yeah. of things. Are we boring you? I see you yawning, you know, <laughs> like call it oh. out. Just like you were if you're, you're in a room, but you do it in a playful, jokingly way. Uh, but That's at the same the time, too. there's a level of no, seriousness there. Too. Yeah. 100 yep. percent. yeah you got to know how to i'm i'm pretty sure whoever you talk to i'm a i'm guessing because i don't think there's too i did a post the other day about who's teaching eq out there mm -hmm. and so which is interesting you brought that up because that's um that's some someone he's been teaching for 30 years okay i'm pretty sure this is the same guy because he said well i've been doing this for x i don't know i don't remember how many years but he said that well i'm out here teaching it to everyone and here's my business and i'm like oh amazing and bill so johnson yeah it was so i'm really like mm -hmm. that's amazing that people are doing because i whenever i have helped in the sense of being uh, helping reps learn just the basics when it comes to kind of unorthodox ways the basics unorthodox um uh, in the sense of how to prospect and prospect differently opposed right. to just Smile, dial, boom, emails, all that. But go join Slack communities and make friends with people. Um, go ask for feedback when you're when you're getting off a call and you know someone tells you no. Mm -hmm. Rewind a little bit. Hey, just real quick, can I just ask you for a little bit of feedback? Like, what would you tell me would be, you know, if this were we were to reverse roles, like what would have made this go swimmingly? Like, how could I have done better? Right. It would be, you know, eight out of 10 times this person would probably book with me when I would go back and ask for feedback because people's favorite topic is themselves. So yeah, this is go true. back to that, mm -hmm. like they're going to tell you what they think. And then I say, can I, can I give it one more shot? One more shot. What you got, you know, and playful a little bit. And then it's all about just having, you got to have fun with it too, because like right now it's so up and down sales marketing everything in this tech b2b SaaS world and just in the world the world's upside down right so it's if you're not trying to find the good in the in certain things and trying to figure out how to do things 
for yourself in the very best way. What's your next best step? And not looking at what everybody else's next steps are because looking, I think Nicki Minaj says this, counting my money ain't making you rich, which I think is like a great line. Yeah. Mind Mom, your business. Yeah. Here saying it. But yeah, I'm like, it's so true. Mm. You're looking over at the other person counting their money. I'm not making a dime if right. I'm doing you know, I'm not focusing on my next best step, which isn't good. Yeah, for I think it's about bigger. comparing ourselves, right? Like it's it's not that's not the way to progress is to compare yourself. Uh, that's just a recipe for stress and anxiety and loneliness. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. yeah. yeah. Uh, well, let, let's, let's switch gears a little bit. I, you, you mentioned a couple of things that I definitely want to pick up our, at one point, but before I do, you were at seamless AI for a while. Um, you were enterprise sales development and then enterprise sales and strategic growth. Looks like you had a promotion there. Talk about that time in your career, whether it was joining Seamless or moving from inside out to Seamless. What was happening in your career around that time? Well, let me just clarify real quick. I did not get a promotion. I just, it was self-declared promotion. Got by it. Okay. Putting ROI on something that I believed I could do. And so I was meeting my numbers, but I also was doing other things that were going to boost that ROI. So then I presented the results saying, here's two options of what I think that this should look like mm -hmm. of these little job descriptions I can have and a little bit above a pay. Here we go. Um, because nice. challenge things, I don't think the things are going to move as much, you know, not challenge in a bad way, but just test the waters. If you're not testing, you're not, you're, you're not trying, you know, yeah. it's all, yep. you're not going to progress without some sort of you're testing. Gonna you're not going to innovate. Right? Totally. So, um, I, I mean, I can go down a personal little rabbit hole here if you would like, or I can just go straight professional, whatever you think. But I, yeah, whatever. You know, what was going on in your career? I mean, you're making the change uh, and yeah. maybe not having a formal promotion, but obviously you're making an impact. Uh, I'm curious what was happening in your career around that time. So, so let's get back to Inside Out. So I was, I joined Inside Out. I did not know what the acronym SDR meant. I had zero go. clue. And you had come from real estate before that, I see. Mm -hmm. I did real estate um, and loved it, but it was not sustainable. And mm -hmm. so during kind of that time period, I became a single mommy of two little girls on my own and thought, okay, we're living under a bridge or we're living under a roof. Like, which one am I going to choose for myself mm -hmm. and my kids? That's a crossroad right there that I'm choosing. We're going under a bridge and we're going to make a way. And I like hell or high water, like I will provide for my kids. And so I walked into this interview at Inside Out and I said, all right, who is it that I have to be? And who's the top person here? I said, and so we, have, anyways, they hired me not knowing, I'm still walking in, not knowing what an SDR basically is. I'm like learning day three on the floor, you know? Well, that's but, common, right? A lot of industry changes join SDR positions, but yeah, uh, I'm curious how you made, how you made it work. But, you know, I, I made goals for myself and I, Put them on a sticky note right on my on my desktop and I could see them daily I think that the power vis visualization is so large and just it can it can move mountains if you really 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 invest in that visual visualization of right. seeing and believing in yourself enough even when mm -hmm. life is upside down you're like what am I going to do but if you speak it into existence there's a game-changing moment of like I will opposed to I can. Those right. are two totally different things. So I found the guy who I found him, seeked him out, the guy who's top dog ever and inside out. And he was about 60 years old, crushed it on the phones as an SDR, just living his best life. And I'm yes. like, I love this. So I would sit with him for about two weeks and I just, I learned and I just learned. And he had EQ that was like extremely high. And then he knew how to kind of he knew product knowledge enough to be able to speak to that. So the yeah. IQ was there when it made sense. So I, I picked up tidbits from that, but also knew that was going to be a focus of mine to really learn from the best of the best, hear advice from others. Don't have to take advice from everybody, but I can hear it. And then add Amelia flair, if you will, to what I was doing and have a little fun with it. And so then I had my goal set that, okay, I'm, I'm not going to have a ramp period. That's not a, that's not something I'm going to do for myself. I'm, I'm not going to give myself that grace because I'm wow. to go and make moves. 
Well, that's so, a shout out right there. Come on. Yeah, for those that are listening, nine point nine percent of the time, an SDR or salesperson is going to take the ramp plan. They're not going to opt out. So you opted out of your ramp plan effectively? I 100% did mm -hmm. not. I was, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to, because if this is not where I belong and I can't thrive here, like I, I'm going to go figure out where the best place for me is. And okay. I'm going to prove to myself more so as a prove to myself, I can do something I say that in my mind at the time, like, oh, can I, can I not? Yes, you can't like, yes, you can. Yes, you will. Wrote it down, put on a sticky note on my desktop and would see a daily had a picture of my girls right next to it too so I could see my why and it was a okay month one is done and I'm getting called into the CEO's office saying that we either have to keep the lights on or pay everyone their commission or put a cap on everyone's commissions based oh, on wow. produced because I just tripled my quota that was like full-blown quota not just ramp quota month one I just when I mean I just tripled it of what mm -hmm. it should have been full ramped up um so put a cap on everyone's commission wait wait so back up okay You're saying that the all the whole team's comp plan got capped because you blew it out yeah ouch you weren't very popular then <laughs> you know but it was also like what is this girl doing that we're not doing mm. so in my mind I'm like all right what I'm doing here, come on, come, 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 you guys, let's all chat. And it was sessions I would hold like weekly with this other guy, and we would do pretty much just EQ IQ kind of training. I didn't know much about that, but it was just what I felt as though was working, what I saw was working, what I was seeing ROI on, what I was seeing sticking when mm. the, you know, and then with that it's the aes that i had so i had about five aes that i would specifically work with Whoa. and uh i developed great relationships with them but i i learned them like i learned how they worked best and so about two of them three of them i had really solid relationships with who i could still call today and say hi um hey what's going on like what are you doing and mm -hmm. could go backwards and say, hey, could you make this intro for me to so-and-so Nice. Even to this day? And I think that speaks volumes is like, those are the seeds you plant that are going to be fruitful no matter where you go in your career because right. people first approach. Didn't know I was doing that, but I was doing that. And so I decided, well, COVID hit. So then it's, mm. we all go work from home. We get our plastic bins, we go work from home. And I'm like, all right, see y'all when I see you. I don't know. Ended up being like, I am terrible working from home. So we we adopted, we adopted, everybody did, right? So yeah, you got used to it. I was ready for a new challenge too. There wasn't the growth opportunity that I was really like desiring, not really knowing what that was, but it wasn't there. So okay. started interviewing, joined Seamless, and it was it was a different world, um, very much so, of a 10 extra life, and we're going to make a lot of money, and we're going to go big, go home, boom, 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 let's go as fast yeah, as we can. a lot of energy over there. Mm -hmm. A lot of energy, and I decided, okay, I'm going to, I'm not going to match this energy per se, but I'm going to drive results at this energy level, so I'm going to produce as though I'm pouring as much energy into my work with the results, but I'm going to do it strategically. So I'm not going to be burning my energy by calling, dialing, you know, being on the phones, like go, 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 sending as many emails as I can where, I, you know, at first it was where I was doing that. And I'm like, but I'm in this Slack community where I'm getting people who are asking me certain things. I'm just a rep, right? I was like, who's you know I don't mean it in that way not just a rep those are the you know foundational people within the organization but I didn't know that I wasn't closing thing I wasn't in a full cycle like, why are they coming to me what are you asking me like questions for and so about five months in I really got close with two specific AEs there who poured into me I poured into them it was like you know we both yeah, we were partnered it was up. Like, totally so we just partnered up and we were like, hey, let's get this massive, like really aggressively, like 
let's see if we could do this like target account list we're going to go after like the big dogs like we're going to go after those that we it might be hit or miss but let's see let's say we test let's see what we can do so that's when i kind of created my hybrid role after seeing okay i can go and close gong i can go and close th certain things and then it's okay here's the comp structure of what this maybe could look like here's two options because everyone works better with giving two options because psychologically it's a i have to choose one or the other right. so i'm the option close mm -hmm. so i'm i present these two options and they're like well yeah why are we not doing this already and i'm like great perfect so i just took on kind of this enterprise hybrid role of seeing how things were working well and not working the way they should and then also doing the the trust building internally too with leadership mm. so volunteering for specific things that were out of my realm and out of the norm for me to be doing but i knew it was going to plant seeds for my future growth as then taking good, on stretch think, assignments yeah that's good very good, so yeah. good you know like he, there was a, a sales a sales summit and I said, I'll volunteer to be the one to get all the speakers lined up for this summit. And so I did my personalized outreach, one off to each person, trying to get the right people to be speaking at the summit. So that's where a core group of people that I have relationships with now today mm. told me and poured into me and they shared with me, you know, Hey, there's this kind of opportunity out here. There's this kind of opportunity. Like you seem like this would be really great for you. All this said, I turn around, you know, I had people thinking I was chief of staff kind of thing for the CEO there because I was had my hand in a lot of different things. And so I was learning RevOps in a sense, and I didn't realize mm -hmm. I was. And how businesses should and should not be run too. Like what's why do we have so many tools in our toolbox? Like, what are we doing if we're not live? Like, who's teaching us these things, you know? Self-taught. So I never had a process down now, which I've come to learn now, these days, that how important a process is. And then I learned from the wonderful Rosalind Santelena, who taught me everything I know about um, RevOps, because I it led to an opportunity of selling RevOps services through being a part of Rev League, through Rev Genius, actually, and helping coach a few people mm -hmm. one of the other coaches in there reached out to me and was like we should chat and I'm like about what <laughs> and so we go down the path of you know just getting to know each other first and foremost is just hey what are you up to what are you up to who are you where your background one day he says what do you think about joining me and selling RevOps services I'm like I don't know the first thing about RevOps and he's like but you do, you know, more than you realize and you don't give yourself credit for. And so, you know, having, you know, like for me, words of affirmation are things that I need. So I, I'm like, oh, I am good at something. I am good at this. Like, this is right. great. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I, I joined over there and then I learned and Rosalind joined shortly after and just pours into me immensely to where. Yeah. I would be talking about something I had no clue what I was talking about. And she would just like shoot me a text and be like, hey, I got it from here. Kind of thing. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, stop rambling. Lady. Like, I don't know what this person is even saying. And I'm, I'm in my own grave. But I learned so much about what I, what to, you know, when you learn, it's probably, when you learn what not to do, it's that process of elimination by trying of doing the things you, I shouldn't be saying or shouldn't you know people saying like are looking at you sideways or they're crossing their arms or they're like hmm that's Body not language. more mm -hmm. than you right like you don't know what you're talking about then you realize okay that's not what you say in this instance so I had my core like 10 questions I would just my go-to's because I was like if I don't know the answer here's this one that goes <laughs> that relates back to this or this so I could Got just it. get that discovery further but then I learned, you know, a little bit more about what I wanted in life. You know, what does Amelia want? Because I wasn't really, there was no passion behind what I was doing. And that's such a driver for, I mean, it should be for everyone. For me, I, I'm passionate about passionate people. I'm a passionate person. And 
uh, if the world only worked that way. If the world, if where are you at, passionate people? So, you know, the passion and the why behind knowing mm -hmm. I I can't do my best work if I'm if I'm waking up and I'm thinking like, oh, I'm not feeling this. Like I don't want to be doing this. You Which know? is most people. Mm -hmm. Which is most people. And but at the same time, yeah, you've got to make the money. You got to pay the bills. Right. You and, understand a single mom, you at the end of the day, you do what you gotta do. Do what you gotta do. And so doing that great that's fine but then it's i built a great network of people that believed in me important to me and vice versa so where i took a total bet on myself a total gamble and called myself a free agent on linkedin and said i'm i'm gonna just kind of leave a little money on the table there and i'm going to bet on myself and my network and what's to come next day i get a call and i I had an inbox full of people just reaching out and you know encouraging or like, nice. hey, potential opportunity. And I really didn't, I still probably have a good bit of those in there that I never really went through. But I because Reggie caught my attention big time. Because, well, let's talk about Reggie a little quick. Let me jump yep. in. So uh you're heading up evangelism, and that's what I wanted to talk about with you the most. So we don't see that role in every company. Mm -hmm. um so i'm trying to understand for the, the revenue leaders that are listening in for their consultants that are advising companies what can you tell them about what a head of evangelism does you know how does it help drive revenue for the organization uh talk to me about the function of being an evangelist on behalf of a tech company so it was something where i had to sit down and really write out what this job description even looked like because i knew what i was doing was spreading the good word, which is what evangelism is. Um, and I had always kind of worked that way a bit of what the product that I was selling, you know, in Reggie, the, um, our product and being able to go and talk to people and meet buyers where they live. So figuring out where those buyers, like I said to you at the beginning, you know, where finding you, where you lived, mm -hmm. and Twitter, and it's finding where those people live and going there. And then being a part of the conversations and joining the conversations or initiating the conversations or just simply helping in some way, shape, form, whatever. So bring point. it down to earth for me though. When you say go to where people live in a B2B yep. context, yeah. what does that mean exactly? So let's say that, so ICP, VPs of sales, directors of sales, um, sales leaders. Right. A lot of those people are gonna be on LinkedIn. A lot right. of those people are going to be in specific Slack communities. Um, when I was selling RevOps services, a lot of people were in like the Wizard of Ops Slack community. Mm -hmm. So that's where I would go there. Then there would be WhatsApp groups. So it's the dark, it's the dark social aspect of things. It's the things, you know, where they live, you have to go and test to figure out where they live. Right. You know, where are they talking the most? Where are they talking to their peers about what they are seeing in the industry and where the market's going, who's buying what, why are you buying this? How's this helping your organization? Mm -hmm. And then not just lurking, sure, lurk and listen and learn, but also join in, ask questions and befriend these people too. Be a peer to your buyer, potential buyer. And so how, how much time a day do you spend engaging in uh slack channel groups or because i and let, let's give it a name too because i think you're part of pavilion as one of them right yep. um so what are these slack communities and like how much time do you spend engaging in them so i'll take a, a good solid about two and a half hours a day okay. where i'm going back and engaging or i'm providing something that's going to be of value so hmm. from kind of week one at reggie i pushed for a pavilion partnership because I knew that based off ICP and the people who had the pen in hand, like at the end of the deal, they lived there. I knew that's where they were at because I had seen the ROI from that previously from doing so and generating a good bit of revenue, a good bit of relationships, and then having relationships with leaders within who worked at Pavilion who would tag me in certain things like, oh, I think Amelia Taylor can help you with this. And that's just credibility purposes right there. You know, right, like that's right, the, right. back to that relationship piece. Yeah. 
absolutely. And so, you know, I, I would send over a, a, you know, a message that someone would post out there and I would send it to one of the people at the pavilion. I'm like, Hey, you ready to play our game? And they'd be like, shoot the, shoot it over to me. And then they would go tag me in it. And so it was, they, you know, we would, we would play this kind of game where it was like, Hey, got your back too. And so, you know, I'd send them a Starbucks gift card, whatever. And it's like, let's just be friends. Like, let's just do things with like having a little bit of fun with it, but also I would go and tag people when it wouldn't relate to me too, in certain aspects, like who's the best you know, right. person for a Salesforce admin that we need. Great. Okay. I'm going to go tag, tag Derek. Yeah. Derek at three link. He, he can help you. Derek at three link is who's going to help you. He's going to be amazing. And that's exactly who, number one person. There you go. So that's, you know, knowing that you're not just pushing yeah. anyone and everyone's name out there, but you're also just helping in that regard. I mean, there's the aspect you of give, give. Yeah, like you're you're giving, not just taking. That's the important thing. And I don't, my understanding is you can't, it's it's frowned upon to be pitching in uh these Slack channels. So if someone says, Hey, I've got a problem, what do you guys think? How are you guys dealing with it? And they're asking their community, if we try to, you know, jump in on that conversation, for instance, I know I specialize in sending up SDR teams. So if a company's hey. I'm trying to start up an SDR team. I don't know where to start. What do I do? And I try to chime in and say, hey, I can help you with that. My services cost this much. This is how I work. And I start pitching and doing all that. Yeah. Do Ixnay yeah. on that. Exactly. So how do I don't I still don't understand how one can be using these channels to generate revenue if you're not supposed to be doing that. You don't do it in hmm. the in the scene places. It's the ah, okay. <laughs> back door. <laughs> You go to the you go to the DMs is you know slide in the, you slide in the DMs real quick. You oh, okay. go that way. But you know, you you post something because other people you would like for them to know you can help in that regard too. Right. So sure. Mm -hmm. One, the brand awareness is what you're trying to drive. Mm -hmm. And then two, it's the um it's the I'm a thought leader in this space. So I'm someone who can help in this regard because this is what I do. You don't have to bring up the company name. Right. You talk about the problems and the solutions and they can infer who you know your expertise from there right and it's like hey um i think i can help in this regard shooting your dm do i do that and then i'm like hey we have a bunch within the okay, community there you go there's the tactic folks yeah it's yeah it's just super simple and that and then i will nine out of ten times end it with for the sake of simplicity here's my calendar link if it makes sense for us to sync up if not either way great to say hey happy to be a resource in any way that you need whatever cheers okay. and, and because it's either you know if i can help now or if not great like but here you go let me make your life easier and i remember kyle lacy said something at one point years ago when i was trying to prospect him and i saw um i could not get a hold of this guy to save my life i mean i was trying everything finally did and he said he would take a meeting because my outreach was good and i provided a calendar link for him uh, because he did a post recently that said recently three years ago or so saying make my life easier just put the calendar link in there like let me just like I don't want to go back time, yeah yeah so I'm like hmm, okay that's the EQ let me just be smart right now and like go back to what he said <laughs> leverage that common sense, like, yeah. common sense which I don't know if it's ever been common let's be honest but it's you know we know I don't know whatever happened with that conversation at all but it's uh that was such a driver for me of that I've done since then really is like let me make someone on someone's life easier let's do things in a simplistic way of if it makes sense let's chat further here's my link either you know either way great to be connected I'll shoot you a connection request on LinkedIn just to be connected and excited to follow your journey of success reach out whenever and you just make your life easy so that's the amount of revenue that's exchanged within those DMs is immense. It is insane. And it is a number that um, people don't realize right. how large it can be um, because that's where their peers are at. That's where the people are talking. And so it's simple to just have a, a quick conversation with people right there. And one deal that I had um, at one point, it was, <laughs> I don't know if we ever jumped on a Zoom. I think it was we were on huddles like we would do like the video like huddle stuff like it was that easy and free-flowing that we just oh so you're talking about the I don't, I don't know if i follow so are you saying that the 
the video conferencing within the, the platform, within the Slack community, you were just having your calls right then and there and doing discovery, et cetera? It would be so, it'd be like, cool. hey, do you have like 20 minutes now? Let's just yeah. do it. Let's hop on. Mm -hmm. and so, you know, is that the norm? Mm -hmm. No. Is it always going to be convenient? Just possible. Yeah. But these but are kinds of things that play out when you have someone who had, who's heading up evangelism for you and doing community driven marketing and being that face of your organization is that they're out there meeting them where they live and having conversations about the things they want to talk about because those conversations are being surfaced organically. So you're, you know, it, it's serendipitous. You don't, it at least appears to be, and, and as opposed to you reaching out cold, like an SDR and trying to, you know, force fit something. Right. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, there's the, the aspects of the influence marketing or influence revenue and then the, the um, source revenue too. So those are the big whale companies where I'm like, oh, okay, I know where this person's at. Like I know where they are. They're not super active on LinkedIn. They're more in this community or they're in mm. one of the, um, they've got a community of their own, you know, something, whatever it may be. Let me Couldn't go. SDRs do that effectively? I mean, if they broaden their perspective of strategic outreach, couldn't SDRs carve out a couple hours a day, a few hours a week to participate and, and that's probably what's happening do you see a lot of sdrs and salespeople doing what you're doing so it's not just the evangelist people and who are community driven and that sort of thing but there's also practitioners who are carrying quotas and whatnot that are out there engaging these communities too right right and i but here's the problem when you think about it too is that there's the whole double tap triple tap problem that you can fall into real quick because mm. if you're not pushing things at a sales force and there's or you're you know, whatever your CRM is and having that ownership of that contact to where people are double checking things. Mm -hmm. Salespeople are not great admins. They're the worst. We all know this. So I disagree. Things and sales People say that all the time. and want to label salespeople that way, but I don't agree. We had, a, I had another vendor on here who was like, oh, salespeople hate updating their sales force. Well, the best salespeople actually are maniacal about their sales force and their, their forecasts and their funnel and their lead statuses. The best of the best don't slip on that stuff. They don't. They use like a scratch pad, right? Like um, making life easier. And my, for me, that's what I right, right. The more efficient. Doing is I, it's the shortcut way of doing it, if you will, of making my life easier, but also it's efficient, efficient, yeah. effective. It's going to be, it's a win-win, but I, you know, I want to know what I'm bringing to the table because at the end of the day, I've got to be able to defend my role and what I'm doing because it is an unorthodox role. It is not one that is, cut and dry right that's why we're here to talk about it because you don't see it a lot you know and that's why i think it when it sounds like when it's done right it can have massive upsides to it right um so what would you recommend to someone who's wanting to crack into this type of role they like the idea of community-based outreach and fostering those connections how would you recommend someone who maybe just has just been promoted into a evangelist role What's the first thing that they should do to hone their skills? I would say, I mean, if you're in that kind of role, like first and foremost, find like six buckets where you feel as though this company could really have massive impact. So let's mm. say for me, taking on like the whole advisor marketing and really working with them on where our advisors are at, what their go to market strategy, how we can help kind of springboard that, you know, uplift mm -hmm. them and guard, but also do it alongside them and be a part of what they're doing. Um, there's the specific people that you want to do influencer marketing with or sponsored, um, sponsor something with that, you know, they're making big moves. Great. Let's sponsor something they're doing. Um, then you look at the, uh, the content creation that you want to do. So you want to, you don't have to talk about your brand, like, or, you know, what the company is necessarily doing all the time. If you get through a lot of my content, a lot of it is not Reggie related. Mm -hmm. Um, but people come to me about Reggie all the time because I'm under the umbrella of it. It already is right there in my title. Why do I have to go and scream it? But then another part is having and building an army of Reggie users or those who believe in the product because they see the ROI on it and they will, they know that there's a fruit that's going to be, you know, delivered to them because right what they are producing. I mean, they're producing. Yeah, the true believers. They've seen the value. It's been proved out to them and their use of it. So that's actually a good point. Do you, how much of your 
in order to evangelize, you have to spend time with your best users. You, you, so how much of your time or what does that relationship look like? How much are you gleaning from those interactions to help you go out and preach the good word better? Right. So I will use um, my guy, Joey. He's a rhetorial. He is our best sales rep, not on payroll. And I say that all the time because he, right. you know, and he will tag me or he will tag Reggie and things. I mean, it's daily kind of thing because he is like, he has seen what Reggie can do for him. And he's mm -hmm. like, this is game changer stuff. And this is where I know I'm saving time and I'm actually delivering what is going to be um, getting my, you know, I'm, I'm saving time, but I'm also generating revenue at the same time because I know what I'm sending out is going to be something that's relatable and it's going to be personalized to this specific individual. Mm -hmm. um, I can do it at scale or I can do it you know, one off, but um, I can do it on social. I can do it through a blog or a newsletter. And you're that. meaning as you use the Reg AI tool. To use Reg, yeah. Right. And then, you know, they become people that, okay, let's boost you up in a sense. And let's make sure that you, if you're bringing people in, let's give you that 20% kickback of what, you know, of uh -huh. someone. So you, you know, you don't want the people who are on the rooftop shouting out the name of the company to not be rewarded in some way, right? Sure. You, yeah. you want mm -hmm. them to feel as though like they're seen. And it's, I, you know, people will- a lot Do you of, structure those programs yourself instead of evangelism? Do you create the, the cutouts and what that looks like? Yes and no. So I, interesting. So I am learning marketing with a sales brain mentality totally. Right, right, right. It is a whole nother world. So many different acronyms. We activate everything, all these things I'm learning, but it's also learning the whole lay of the land again, even more so of how business can and should be run. And I'm learning from Nina Butler, who is one of the greatest marketers I have ever met that I'm like, I don't know half of what you're saying sometimes, but it sounds really great. <laughs> it will go through and she'll teach me all these things, but I'm learning this process driven approach to everything of, okay, if you slow down a little bit, you can, you're getting way ahead. You know, once you slow down, slow then you're going to speed up. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And I've always just been full speed ahead. Let's just go and see what happens. Break things. And it's all good. We'll figure it out later. 100% because it was survival mode a lot in my life. And so when you have that survival mode, it's like, you got to go, you got to go, you got to go. And this breakneck pace that it's never going to get you anywhere, you know, um, because you're going so fast. I mean, you get somewhere, but you burn out so fast that it's, you know, you're not doing anybody. A whole other episode. whole other episode. So, um, you know, going back to evangelism and totality, break it down into these buckets of what you think they're going to be for your comp for that company specifically and present those and say, okay, what are the two top ones that you believe leaders will be the most beneficial? Come with four or five bullet points within each of those of what you think that those can look like. Okay, I'm going to do community led growth. I'm going to do advisor marketing. I'm going to do um, content marketing, doing, event marketing. Right. And, you know, mm. I'm going to be doing, you know, these certain things, but I, I'm going to be attending webinars or podcasts or um, being not just the brain, not just the face of the company, right? Like that's not the goal. It's the person that's a trusted person that you can go to. And yeah, say. who has authority, who can speak to these topics with, you know, I mean, you think about evangelism, the word, right? This the guy downtown San Francisco amongst all the chaos. He's, you know, quoting the Bible, right? right. Word for word without even having to look at it. He knows it backwards and forward. That's what I think of when I think of evangelism, someone who can, who's an orator and can knows the domain in the area so well that they can go out and just organically create these opportunities because as they speak, they come, right? And uh, we won't get too down the the, the religious past. I know that's part of your background. Dad was a pastor and that probably helped you be, pastor. right? Yep. Got the whole, you know, it's so funny. I'm like, um, when Sounds I Sounds familiar what I was describing. <laughs> I was doing it, Reggie. He was like, um, at first he was like, wow, I didn't think this was going to run the family just based off of who, you know, because I was typical. I mean, I was, yeah. they put locks on all the windows, the whole thing. I was to lived up to the preacher's daughter's name. Right. So that, you know, it's pretty funny, but it also is the, like Arthur Castillo over at Chili Piper. He has a great example of 
leading evangelism, but also a ton of marketing. Well, he's a chief evangelist officer, right? That's is that is his so, title. So, so it's uh, what is his title? It's good. It's good and evil in both of it. So it's got dark social something. Uh, and then, well, I, I mean, know the chief in, in evangelist officer role is something that's emerging, right? It's like CEOs it's, are taking on this new spin of a title to it, encompass it, what you're talking about and things like that right it's this people first approach that people are seeing working more than this cold outreach that right, right. is not personalized or relevant to whoever they're talking to so mm. um it's you it has to be something that's going to be okay you've got you've got everybody's got their solutions that they have everybody's got their problems that they need to be solved but how do you do it in the very best way with the right people, with your ICP, you've got your TAM, you know, but that ICP and go find those specific people and then just go and help first and foremost, just help right. and right. what that looks like. But then if you're trying to figure out what this evangelist role looks like, go to the evangelists who are already doing this and ask them like, like yourself. That's, what we're, that's why we're, we brought you on the show. <laughs> Yeah, I will help you guys. I will share all my all the things I've produced. But there's others out there, like you, is your point, that are are sharing the game and demonstrating what to do as well. And so there's a lot to a lot because it's a it's a small pocket. It's not it's not like sales managers or SDRs, right. SDR managers. It's everywhere and every particularly in tech and SaaS. But this evangelism mm -hmm. thing is 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 catching a lot. I mean, it's not terribly new, but it's definitely catching on more so now, and you see it popping up. So I was always curious of how, you know, a go-to-market leader could leverage this, this role because, I mean, sure, it's not terribly inexpensive to have someone head up evangelism for my organization either. So the ROI associated with that, and it sounds like you have some ways to measure all those things you were talking about, direct and indirect attribution. So that's really good. Let's transition. Uh, Reggie AI. There. That was a big thing to figure out, the attribution. That was a big yeah. thing. You know. Never easy, no matter who you are. Uh and that's your Chris Walker, right? Yeah. The uh, so talk to us about Reggie. I. What are you guys up to today? What's hot and new for you? And where can they find you guys if they want to look you up? So today we launched this amazing um, ebook, actually, that is the generative AI for B two B sales uh, guide. So there are some of Very the good. minds in the game out there of sales that have participated in this, share their wealth of knowledge. Um, Lars Nelson at Snowflake, Leslie Vinets. Um, mm. There's who are advisors of ours too, who are very much so willing to jump in and say, hey, can we be a part of what you're doing? Big names, uh, yeah. Santa, awesome. you know, just wonderful people who really share their wealth of knowledge and their belief in Reggie too, because recently it's been a thing where we're like, okay, let's let all of the advisors know what we're doing too, because they have such heavy influence in what they're doing. Why are we not letting them understand exactly? Let's give them these updates monthly, right? Let's give them like every two weeks, here's where the features that have come out because the engineers are so crazy smart. They're constantly moving and going. They swear they don't sleep. But we, you know, the big thing for us right now is personalization at scale right. and it being where AI is doing about 80% of that, you know, hmm. 80 percent is what I like to say and then it's the 20 30 percent that you pour into that too because if you try to rely on AI alone like you will fail epically because AI will never deliver exactly what you want verbatim to how you want it to be I mean it's going to get close and I'm well, I don't want to say about never uh, but <laughs> the yes today in its current state yeah. you need human yeah. agency absolutely 100%. And, you know, we're not in public sector kind of thing yet. Like, you know, that's a whole other ballgame in itself. But right now for sales reps who are trying to incorporate AI or these leaders who are saying, we need to do this because everybody else is doing it. We're going to fall behind if we don't, because the we're not going to race yeah. so fast. They're in this reaction kind of exactly. We're, we're just reactive. We're just getting it to do it. And we're they like, got AK 47s and nuclear bombs. We need the same yeah. thing. Right. Like, boom, boom, pop. Yeah. yeah. They're just, let's just run and go as fast as we can. Okay. Who's teaching people how to leverage AI in the very best way possible? So that's the ebook, is what you're saying. It's like there's, there's all this, these tools and mechanisms with AI at the center of it. But here's how to think about it strategically and how to deploy it without 
probably breaking the bank and you know getting into yeah, all the automated I, stuff that we don't want to do and bot and spamming right like yeah right, because it's based on best practices so hundreds right, of thousands right. of emails that are analyzed every single month to where you know okay going outreach sales loft all of those what's working what's not those are mm -hmm. being analyzed so the ai is learning as you go so right. reggie sits on gbt4 so it's going to be where it's the same generating system but it's for personalization not generalization so there's the you can jump into chat gbt but it's all going to be very generalized right. reggie's going to do it to where it's personalized per persona per pain point per value prop you deliver uh there's a built-in CMS to where sales and marketing can talk to each other kind of thing. Mm. So you've got that collateral stored right there. So you know who's sending what out, what's happening. Well, one and thing you, I like about the platform is it can ingest our own data into it. I, think, I don't think right? a lot of other platforms talk about the fact that you can pull in your own historical data with from your CRM. And that's part of the data modeling of how they create that personalized messaging. A lot of the personalizing tools that we see that are AI based are taking data points from external sources. So, you know, looking at the web, they're looking at other players and they're saying, okay, here's, here are some anecdotes about that you can use for personalization, or they're taking it to a point where they're giving them two or three emails to choose from kind of like what you guys do, but it's not factoring in, Hey, Billy Joe Bob, who used to work with us a year ago, had a couple of opportunities with you and it didn't go well. Like that internal historical stuff isn't mean, isn't, isn't uh, factored in in every platform. So the fact that you guys can use, uh, you know, data that's unique to our business uh, so that you can capture our own voice and posture. I think that is one thing that really intrigues me about your platform. Reggie AI is hot, guys. If you're not leveraging or doing, if you're thinking about AI tools for personalization, there's a lot out there. You can go back to previous interviews in the show. I've interviewed some of those founders and those companies, but Ray GI has got something different they're making as well. So definitely give them a look. Absolutely. And thank you for that too. I mean, it's, uh, you know, I can plug Reggie all day because I have a massive belief in the people that I'm working for and the, the founders being, I mean, on another level, literally, I mean, it's one of our founders three, he just did an amazing webinar talking about where AI was 10 years ago that people didn't even know things were happening, where it is today, where it's going, because he's been in it for so long. And he was one of the first engineers over at Google, one mm -hmm. of the first engineers over at Facebook. He is smart as can be. And our other founder, he was one of the first um, people over at Outreach, scaling from zero to 50 million with Manny. And so he knows email and that deliverability he knows that game so they're yin and yang very well you know right, that, right, right. they play well together i have such belief in the leaders and who's developing what reggie's doing and seeing everything how it's just enhancing and this product roadmap that we have that is just insane of what the capabilities are going to be one day again i'm not in sales anymore so this isn't me doing this pitch to you guys this is me saying like you're gonna if you don't jump on something like Reggie, you will fall behind. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you need to have it in your go-to-market. You need to have it in your product. You need to have it in your operations. If you're not applying AI strategically, um, you, yeah, exponentially left behind. Where do you want to send people? If they want to find you, look you up. I mean, I'm sure you're active on LinkedIn and other platforms, but where do you want to send people to find you? Find me on LinkedIn. That's okay. the very best way. Uh, Find me in Pavilion if you're in Pavilion. I love finding those. I'm glad you dropped that. Good. Yeah. I, I love those messages. Just hey, so in this um any other community that we're a part of together. Like I love to see how these things kind of collaborate and come together. Um I am a, trying to be a good Twitter girl, but my words don't want to fit in that short amount. <laughs> That's space. not long enough. <laughs> so it's really a struggle for me, but I'm trying. It's perfect for me. <laughs> so I'm keeping it curved. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're th that's why you live there yeah. so i'm like oh god i'm gonna tweet cool. today but i don't know what to say so linkedin is really the thing and it's um, it's taylor amelia on linkedin by the way guys if you are looking for her i'm looking at her url right now so her name is amelia taylor her you her url is taylor amelia heads up i changed that recently because i didn't want a number in my name ah is that what that is interesting yeah yeah and okay. i just I, that was the reason so there you go but no i I am more than happy to always, I mean, if you go in my, on my LinkedIn, it, there's a link 
below my name, click on that. It's 25 minute, just kind of talk shop. So like, I'm happy to talk to people if they're looking for just a soundboard or guidance or, Hey, what are we doing with AI? Like, where's it going? What do I, what's in my next best step? Or right. if you're an evangelist or trying to pursue that role, like right. happy to help in that regard. Mentorship. Like, Exactly. Pour everything, right? Like pour into people, and but don't pour from an empty cup. Like make sure you're pouring into yourself too.